1270 AM, Belmont, Charlotte, Gastonia. I'd like to say good evening, friends. Good to be back here at the radio station with you this day, the Lord's day, the one that the Lord has made for you and I. I'd like to welcome you to the In the Shadow of the Cross radio broadcast today with Brother Ernest Parker. Coming to you live from WCGC 1270 in Belmont, North Carolina. This broadcast is paid for by Rusty and Teresa Hollis and friends. For all correspondence and prayer requests, Said to Brother Ernest Parker, 403 Ryan Circle, guest on your North Carolina 28054. It is good to be here today. I'm glad we could be back this way. Uh, hey Amen. We've been in a wonderful service all morning, plus we've been to a funeral. So, you know, we've had a, a day, a little of each today. But knowing that the man was born of the power of the Spirit of God makes all the difference when you die. So, it is good to be here. Today, if you have a prayer request, you call it into us here at the radio station at 704-825-2812. Amen. We'll be glad to pray for you. If you have a song request, call it into the same number today. If you have a prayer request, like I said, call it in. Let us pray for you today. You pray for us as we continue to get into the service today. We have several folks here with us there. I have some from the church, our brothers, our sisters, uh, my wife, uh, son-in-law. I have several people here with us today. They've come to worship the Lord with you. So uh, you pray for us at this time. Amen. We want to go to the Lord in prayer before we get into the service today. And Amen. And ask that God would just put his blessings up on the service, that he will anoint the service this day, especially for you. So at this time, let's pray. God, our Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come to you once again this Lord's Day, uh, Heavenly Father, thank you, God, for the power of God uh, we felt this day and the services we've uh, been in this day, Lord. Thank you, God, for the Word of God. Uh, Lord, it was proclaimed from behind the pulpit this morning, Father, uh, for those that got touched in a mighty way. Thank you, God, for the funeral service, the great uh, preaching we had there, uh, Father, that there were sinners told about Jesus and how to be saved, Father. We just pray uh, day for this ministry, Lord. You bless each and every one that's under the sound of our voice this day. Uh, Heavenly Father, be one out there that has a need today, Father. We pray for. Uh, Father, let them call it into us here today, Father. We pray, uh, Heavenly Father, your blessing to be upon the service this day. Uh, Father, bless the singers today. I not the singing, Father, we pray. But I pray that you're not the preaching the service today also, Father. And we'll thank you, God, for all that you do for us. Uh, thank you for all that you've done. For it's in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, Father. We do ask it all this day. Have your precious right away in this service, we pray. Amen. Amen. I guess we'll let Sister Janice lead us off at this time. Uh, amen. Pray for her. I want to say it's good to be here today. I love the Lord, and I love doing anything that I can for Him. I love singing for Him. I just love, I've been, I love being in worship services with the Lord, where the Lord's at, where you can feel the mighty power of God. And I thank Him and I praise Him today. Amen. The Lord. I love one year he'd reach the east. Call in them for requests today. The song's dedicated to each and every one that's listening. He'd be holding yeah. to God's hand a long, long time. Oh, a long, long time. Thank you, all. And as I knew beside his bed, my heart was thrilled at oh, what he thank said. You, Lord. If I go the victory's mine I'm a winner either way If I go or if I stay For I still have Jesus each passing day Keep those requests coming in now I have my healing in love Lord. For life forever Amen. if I go Oh, 
Thank the Lord, I'm a winner either way today. Amen. It's Sister Janice. Uh, her and her husband's here with us. She uh, plays the piano there at church. Amen. We have a great time in the Lord. I tell you what, folks. If you'd have been there Tuesday night and the Spirit of the Lord ascended upon that church, uh, people was walking the aisles of praising God with their hands up. The altar was full. Uh, amen. Numbers of people came up wanting to be anointed and asked for a prayer cloths. You know, we just had a great time. The anointing of God uh, was over the service. The pastor didn't even get to preach. Amen. Uh, when the Lord's on the scene, ain't much more you could do but just sit back and enjoy uh, His presence there. But we, uh, we attended church at an open Bible assembly. Uh, Reverend Charles Curtis is the pastor there, great man of God, preaches the Word of God. God. Hey, man, uh, he preaches under the power and spirit of God. You know, uh, that's, why, that's what you don't have a lot of a lot of times this day and time in the churches is preaching under the great anointing of God. You know, if the anointing of God's out there, there's not much preaching uh, will go on. So we uh, thank God for them today. I'd like me to also remember the pastor's wife today. Hey, man, she's in uh, the hospital. She's got fluid around her heart and her lungs. And he asked me uh, if we would mention her and have y'all pray for her today. We're going to remember here as we pray. Also today, remember the Stroop family, Brother Laydell Stroop, good preacher friend of ours, passed away, and they buried him right at this present time. So uh, you remember that family today. I'm sure they desire your prayers. Uh, amen today. We've got a lot of requests that's coming in all ready. Uh, also pray for Annette, Annette Howard and Jerry Willard. Uh, thank God for that request today. That's her sister, Betty Parnell. Said she was enjoying the broadcast and said to remember her. She's sick today, so we want to remember that one today. Also pray for uh, Mickey Swart. She has an ulcer on her foot. And also pray for her family. And also uh, pray for Mary Thompson and family. Uh, also pray for the kids and grandkids. Uh, also pray for Valerie. Uh, she's uh, six months old and needs a liver transplant. Oh, Lord. God's able today. You know that? I believe that God's able to recreate a liver. Amen. If God's able to create you and I, he's able to recreate uh, things that go wrong with us today. And also remember our troops today. That's something we all need to do. Remember those that's fighting there off in the foreign battlefield today. Amen. That God will continue to watch over them. Also have another one come in. Uh, Ruth said to please say a special prayer for her. Uh, and Trudy is driving her crazy. Amen. Thank God. God's able to handle Trudy there, Ruth. Uh, amen. You just keep praying. We're going to have prayer here for all these requests that's coming in uh, here in just a little while before the message. But we want to get back and sing you a few more songs. So you continue to pray for these that's come this way. Uh, today the same for you. Amen. God is blessing in a mighty way. Go ahead, Sister Janice. Uh, sing us whatever the Lord laid upon your heart today. Blood today, you don't have blood. blood. Hallelujah. No for oh, thank the Lord.
thank the Lord for the blood today. We'll ask Brother Bobby if he will give us a short word of testimony today. Uh, amen. Go ahead, I want to thank the Lord for the opportunity to come out tonight, this afternoon, to worship. You know, Sunday's my favorite day. I love amen. to worship. Uh, Sunday's my favorite day. I get to go to church twice on Sunday. And you know, there are a lot of people don't come, come on. once a month or once a week. I just don't understand that. I thank you ought to go to church when the doors open. And I thank the Lord for that. It's a privilege to be able to go out and to worship. It's a privilege to come over here and worship. This is a worship service. I feel it. I feel the Spirit just like I do in church. And I thank the Lord for that. And I love it. It it feels so good inside. I just don't know why everybody don't want to feel like this. I wish I'd have been saved a long time ago. I don't see why I lived in sin. I wouldn't go back for nothing. And I pray that I'll always hold on to the salvation that I got. When I go to heaven, I want to be there with all of my friends that's gone on before. I got some friends that died in church that I miss very deep, badly. But I want to see them again, and I'm going to. And I'm going to see my, my father and mother, my loved ones. And I'm looking forward to that. And I'd like to see everyone out in Radio Land. They room for all at the cross. Yes. Thank Amen. you, Lord. Thank God for that Praise testimony God. today. Got another request come in. Uh, said to rem- remember Grandma and asked uh, Betty to sing uh, for her and Ruth a uh, song, Build My Mansion. Betty, you want her to play or you want to play, sister? Huh? Let's wait till she gets up. We'll sing them something else. Something, you know something. Hey, Amen. Glad to have Betty out with us also today. Hey, Amen. It's a blessing to our heart today. This is for Ruth and Mothers. Each and every one that's listening out there today. today, folks.
Thank God. We've got more prayer requests to come in this time. Hazel Moore called and said to remember her. She fell and hurt her hip and to pray for her brother, Hank Martin. He is in the hospital in bad shape. And also to pray for her son's knees. Is in bad. They're in bad shape. And his name is Charles Moore. She said uh, she is enjoying the broadcast. And also we have one came in from Jack Taylor. He wants Betty to sing him a song. Amen. We're going to the Lord here now in just a little bit. For your prior request, you continue to call them in here at 704 825 2812. Brother Jack, I just love you and Kathy, and I've known Brother Jack and Kathy for many years, and they do walk upright with the Lord. I love them, they're very dear to my heart. Thanks, sister. Also dedicated to Brother Norman McCoy, That's his wife. Amen. If you don't have a home church, you want to go to a church somewhere, you want one that's spirit-filled, uh, amen, with the presence of God, you come over to Open Bible Assembly there at the corner of Jenkins and College Street in Dallas, North Carolina. Brother Charles Curtis uh, is pastor there, and I promise you, if you come over, you'll be blessed. Amen. amen. Now, uh, at this time, I'm going to try to, a song, and if y'all want to help me with it, and we're going to dedicate this and. Amen to uh, Ken Bradley today. So uh, you be much in prayer for that. Can you call in your request? Because we're going to preach here in just a little bit. Amen to 704-825-2812. You call your request in. You know, uh, you know uh, supper time. See, 
Can you play it and see? I know it, but I don't know if I can play it. When I was but a boy in days of childhood, I used to play till evening shadows come. Then winding down an old familiar pathway, I heard my mother call. That set up some Come home, come home It's supper time The shadows did fast Come home, come home It's Supper time We're going home at last One day beside her bedside I was kneeling And angel wings were winning Time in heaven. I now I know she's waiting for me there. Come home, come home, it's supper time. The And her for me, your voice I hear once more. The banquet table ready up in heaven. It's supper time upon those cold on Supper time. The shadows lift it fast. Come home, come home. It's supper time. We're going home at last. God, one day after a while, uh, amen, the supper table will be set for you and I, the Lord Jesus. Uh, the Word of God says that He will gird Himself, by, amen, and serve you and I at the greatest supper timer that's ever been known. So we thank God today, amen. We've got a request. Might have time to get one more, and we'll go pray and go uh, to the Word of God. Uh, somebody called in to say, see who it was. Uh, Mom Garris called in and Roger, and uh, they want me to try to sing Will the Roses Never Fade. You want to play that for me? And for Junior Christopher also. See? Huh? I sang it, see? You uh, be patient with us here. Uh, they're not familiar with this piano, or we are not familiar with singing to one another, but amen. The Lord will work it out for us. Amen. You keep praying for us. Mm. I am going to a city where 
prostrates with gold or leaves. Where the tree of life is blooming and the roses fill her face. For a season, soon our beauty is decayed. Thank God I'm going to a city where the roses melt her face. Have our trouble Saints on snared we must evade We'll be free from all temptation Where the roses never fade for a season Soon their beauty is decayed Thank God I'm going to a city Where the roses never fade Think about this today Loved one's going to be with Jesus In their robes of white array Now they're waiting for my coming Where the roses never fade for a season Soon our beauty is decayed Thank God I'm going to a city Where the roses never fade Here they bloom but for a season I am going to a city where the roses never fade. Thank God today. Amen. Eric, who's this? Edna. Edna Kramer called and said, uh, uh, but Dad, sounds beautiful. She said to pray for her and her family and dedicate this song to Ernest and Jeanette and Johnny and Barbara. Hey, man, we ain't going to have time right now for another song. We're going to have to get into the Word, but we do want to ask each and every once here in the broadcast to come around at this time. We want to go to God in prayer on behalf of all those that's called in today. Amen. And if, if you're out there by the radio and you know the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, we're going to ask you, uh, amen, to put your hands upon the radio at this time as a as way of communicating. We're going to all uh, put our hands together here today in the radio station. We're going to pray for each and every request that's come this way today. So let's all pray right now, asking that God uh, will be done. <coughs> God, our Heavenly Father, Lord, uh, as we come to you, Father, coming in the mighty name of Jesus, God, in behalf of all these, uh, God, that's called in for prayer today, Father, we know that you're able uh, to meet each need, Father, as many, uh, Father, that's sick and afflicted, God, they need a touch, and we know your mighty hand, uh, God, that it's not too short to reach down upon the flesh of mankind, uh, Father, and to touch and heal, Father, we pray for those that are sin sick today, uh, Father, don't know they're free part of sin, Father, they may find uh, a way to Jesus, 
before it's eternally too late. We pray, uh, Heavenly Father, they'll fall out of love with Satan and fall in love with Jesus today. But we pray uh, today, God, that all those under the sound of our voice this day will be fed from the Word of God. Uh, Father, help us to ever stand true to you. Uh, bless each and every one that's come this way today to be with us, Father. Bless the singers today. Uh, thank you for the great anointing we feel here in the service this day. Uh, we just pray that you'll continue to bless. Bless those mostly today, uh, Father, that are sick and afflicted, God. You know their needs. All the shut-ins today, the ones that's not able uh, to go out to the house of God, pray that you'll reach your hand down upon these today. Uh, Father, we'll thank you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, God, we thank you for it this day. Uh, have your precious way in our hearts and lives, we pray. Uh, thank you, God, once again for each and every one that's come this way. Uh, and we thank you, Father. Be with us, Father. We proclaim the word of God to this world this day. Uh, help us, Father, not to say anything of ourselves this day. Uh, Father, but anoint us to preach the gospel of God this hour. Father, we pray. Uh, Father, for all that you do for us this day, we'll thank you for us. In Jesus' name, uh, we do ask it all, Lord. Have your right of way in this service. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the Word of God for just a little while. Amen. You know, uh, I preached this message probably several months back. But to me, they don't get old because they're the Word of God. Amen. We should always enjoy the Word of God when you've got somebody proclaiming the Word of God. Uh, you should... The Bible, you know, the Word of God says that not only be hearers of the Word, but be doers. Amen. A lot of times we fail to do what the Word of God says. You know, a preacher can preach to his heart's content, but unless people pay mind to the Word of God and have a desire to live for God, then it don't do a whole lot of good. The Bible says to search the Scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. You know, that's what a lot of people's problems is today. Uh, they only take people's word for things, never getting the word of God down and studying it for themselves. But I'm glad that one day Jesus saved me and gave me the desire to study his word and to preach his word and come to know him in the free part of sin. But today you pray for us we endeavor to get into the word of God for just a short while here. Uh, but you think of this, the title of the message today is, Who We Are. Who we are. Who are we today? Amen. You know what the Word of God says in Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 13 through 16? It said, Ye are the salt of the earth. We, talking about the children of God, are the salt of the earth. He said, But if salt has lost its savor or its flavor, he said, Wherewith shall it be salted? And you know yourself, it's not too much of any kind of food that you can prepare, if you don't add salt to it, it's not fit to eat. It just don't have any flavor to it. Some things naturally have salt in it. Some things don't. And if you don't have good seasoning in the foods that you eat, then it don't taste good. But you you know, you and I are the salt of the earth. He, he also says, he said, it is henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trotted under foot of man. But you take salt that's lost its flavor, it's not good for seasoning anymore. But it's, it's not good for anything but just to be cast out on the ground and to be walked on is what he's saying. But li listen to this, the phrase, ye are indicates that only the genuine, born-again person is salt and can meet the needs of the world. You have to be born again to be salt. Yeah. And only God's people can meet the needs of the world. If people fail to realize what salt actually is. The four things that salt is good for. You think about today. Salt is added for flavoring. And if we fix food without seasoning, it's not good to eat. I, I like pinto beans myself. I don't know about y'all, cornbread and onions and all these things I was raised on, but if you take a cook a pot of beans, if it don't have any salt in it, they're just as bland and flat as could be. But I like a little seasoning, and that's what God likes. God uh, wants his children to be seasoned as with salt because we are referred to as the salt of the earth. 
You can't take someone off the street that don't know God, uh, that can go into the world, uh, can go into the hedges and the highways, uh, amen, and do any good for God. But it takes uh, being born of the power and spirit of God. That's what's wrong with the world today, the churches today. People that don't even know Christ can't lead uh, someone to God. But you and I are referred to as being the salt of the earth. Who are we? Uh, praise God, we're God's uh, salt. We are God's people. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Number two, salt acts as a preservative. You and I have been preserved for the use of God. And when you, you can take anything and you can can it, you can try to preserve it, unless you do it in the right way, then it won't keep. But you and I, the Word of God declares that we are sealed, I praise God, by the Holy Spirit of promise. God's Spirit sealed us. But it is used as a preserving agent. You and I can per help preserve people for God to get them in the right way of God, to tell them the truth of God. Number three, salt melts coldness. Don't you know when it, first thing that happens when it becomes an ice storm, and when it snows, the first thing people does is get out the ice, don't they? I mean the salt, and put it on the ice. They'll put it on their doorsteps, they'll put it on their driveways. But salt... Melts coldness. You know how cold the, the old world is? Uh, praise God, if people are cold toward God, uh, then if we are to solve the earth, uh, you begin to apply the salt. Uh, praise God, the coldness yeah. will leave. Yeah. And the warm uh, love of God, which you and I know, begins to flow into people's hearts. Yeah. You know, the Word of God says that joy comes in the morning. But you can have joy today. If you think if someone is burnt down, they don't know God, they have nobody to turn to, you and I as Christians can go to them and we can begin to melt the coldness away and bring the warmth of God into those hearts. I remember when I was lost and undone, didn't know God in the free part of sin. I remember when I didn't have nobody to call on and my mother told me about Jesus. Matter of fact, she was the first one to ever tell me about Jesus. And you know, my mind began to go back to what my mother had taught me over the years. I, I remember the family prayer that she had with her eight children, and she would get them down uh, in the floor there, and she began to read the Word of God and have prayer every day. Yes. Betty, I know, remembers it. She's older than I am. Uh, but I remember that very well. My mother was an inspiration to me. Amen. It takes being the salt of the earth. Uh, Praise God, it takes being able to bring the warmth to people to show the love of God. You can't just live the love of God. You know that? You've got to show it because it's got to be in you. Amen. It's easy to profess, say, I'm a Christian, but our action is better than words. Right. Jesus said that he left you and I an example uh, that we should follow in his footsteps. Now, if we begin to follow Jesus, we become the soul of the earth, don't we? It also salt heals wounds. Do you know all of that? I didn't. I didn't know that they used salt to heal wounds. But salt. I remember my mother. She would take salt water. She would heat it up and put salt in it. We have a cut on our foot or something. Mother would bathe our foot in that salt water, and the next day the soreness would be gone out of that wound. But salt, we can help heal the wounds today because we are. The salt of the earth, praise Amen. God. Hey, Amen. Man, I thank God today uh, that you and I can help to heal uh, the pains and the sufferings of those. Uh, you just think when you was a sinner, when you had no one you could call on. Uh, praise God that when you found Jesus, uh, praise God, he's there right now. If you want to drop down on your knees, uh, praise God, begin to cry out. He's sitting uh, at the right hand of power, interceding uh, for you and I today. Uh, He's never on vacation. He never takes time off. Praise God, he's always there. He never sleeps. But his attentive ear is always listening. Praise God for our cries. People say, well, I pray, and I just don't never get through to God. Well, maybe you need to check up. 
Maybe you're not the soul of the earth. Maybe you're not living the way you ought to. Praise God, we owe it to God to be the best we can. Not because we want to be pleasing to people, but pleasing to God. We are the soul of the earth. This, this, this is a good description of the believer in the relationship to the world which they live. Not only does the Word of God say we are the salt of the earth, but we, but He also says that we are the light of the world. We're not only salt, but we're the light of the world. If you and I are the light of the world, then through us people will see Jesus. No matter how great the darkness may be, Praise God, when the light begins to shine, the darkness has to leave. There's so many today that's walking in darkness and they don't know the light. You can be in a dark room and you can't see your hands in front of you, but the least uh, little bit of light, uh, amen, takes away the darkness. Uh, but darkness can never take away the light. Uh, amen. You think about it. Great God, people are walking in darkness. Uh, but yes, they profess to be the light of the world, uh, the son of the world. Uh, but their lives is not proven that. We are the light of the world. He said, you are in verse in Matthew 5, 14 and 16. He said, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Wouldn't it be funny to think that a city set up on a hill, everybody's looking on that hill, and there's a city, how could you hide it from anyone? Same way with our lives as Christians. If we let our light shine, we set it on the candlestick, then it gives light into the whole world, don't it? How many folks you know today that say they're children of God, but they're ashamed of God? I work with a lot of people that say they're Christian, but they never have a testimony. Never talk about God. I'm not just not calling no names, but people that says they're Christians and never talks about God. I've worked there for over two and a half years. I never hear them talk about God. You try to bring up something about the Bible and they want to change. They start talking about something else. But you and I are the light of the world. If we can't talk to one another that's children of God, who can we talk to? If we can't talk to each other as brothers and sisters in Christ, how can we talk to sinners? Jesus went in... They called him a friend of sinners, didn't he? Because he went there for one purpose. Not just to eat with sinners. Not to be friends with publicans. But he went there that they may know God's way. You know, they was always trying to entrap Jesus. The Pharisees and the Sadducees trying to trap Jesus into saying something. But he was here for one purpose. He come to save that which was lost. He said, it's not the well man that needs a physician, but the sick man Amen. that needs a physician. Right. Why would we take a doctor to a well man? But we would seek out someone that was sick if we was a physician and begin to doctor on them. A well man has no need of a physician. But today, folks, people, is supposed to be the light of the world. As a Christian, we should... Let our light shine clearly. Shine forth into this world of darkness. We may be the only light the sinner ever sees. You think about it. I worked with a guy for over 10 years. He called me here a while back. He said, I need to talk to you. But I want to see you face to face. So me and my wife, we go over to his house. He told me, he said, I remember all the times that you preached to me while we worked together. And I would just turn and walk away. He said, you know, I'm to a point in my life right now where alcohol possesses me. He said, I got down on my knees the other night with my Bible. And I told God, I said, God, I need your help. But I didn't know how to reach God. He said, that's the reason I called you. He says, he and I went out in his gazebo there in the yard, and I began to explain the plan of salvation to this young man. 
and the big tears filled his eyes, began to roll down his cheeks. I prayed God. I said, the bondage is fixed yeah. to be broke. Amen. Amen. Alcohol yeah. can't bind you. Uh, yeah. Praise God, the devil's what's going to bind yeah. on you. Yeah. I said, but you know, uh, Jesus comes seeking that which we're lost. Uh, and I said, if you want to be saved this day, he said, oh, I do. Yeah. He said, I do. I don't know what else to do. He said, my life. I, I'm at a crossroads where i got to make a decision. So I said, you repeat after me. If you believe what I'm fixing to pray, if you believe it in your heart, you repeat it. And I prayed the sinner's prayer with him. And when I got through, he repeated it. And I said, do you feel like that Jesus has saved you? He said, oh, it feel like the burden of the world. <laughs> Amen. It's been lifted off my shoulders. <laughs> Praise God. It had been raining and it was all cloudy. <laughs> Praise God. The sky was black. <laughs> and when he said, yes, Jesus saved me, you can take me at my word. <laughs> Praise God. The clouds <laughs> parted away in the sun. <laughs> Begin to shine. He said, That's my son from God. That God has saved me. Praise God. You know what happened? He said, Will you baptize me? He said, All I got is a swimming pool here in the yard. I said, Yes. Praise God, I'll baptize you. And then we got in that cool water. Praise God. And you know, hey man, my daughter came over. Hey man, and catch boys. This man's little girl was 10 years old. They've been baptized and saved. Praise God. She wanted to be baptized. We wound up baptizing all three of them. Praise God. And the power of God fell in that old swimming pool that day. Praise God. Jesus said he'd come to set the captive free. Praise God. Those that are burnt down, he would give them rest. He said, oh, come unto me. Oh, you the heavy laden and burnt down. I'll give you rest. He said, turn to me and take my yoke. Praise God upon you. He said, for my burden and my load is light today. That's what it takes. Thank you, Lord. You just keep preaching that. It might not look like you're getting through to a whole lot of people. It may not look like your life's doing a whole lot of good. But praise God, one day after a while, you kept preaching, you'll reap those rewards. Amen. For being faithful to God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. That young man, he's in his 40s. He went to the neighborhood church where he was raised uh, and began to go to church. And he'd call me the other day and said, Well, uh, me and my wife and little daughter all three joined the church. Uh, praise God. Uh, they in there working for God now. Uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, they were getting ready to have homecoming in the church today. Uh, he was at home cooking meat uh, for the homecoming. A man never knew God. Uh, never been with God. People uh, He's in there. But we're the salt of the earth. <laughs> Praise God, we'll light unto the people's pains. Praise God, are in blindness and darkness today. That's what's wrong. You got so many sinners trying to lead people to God, and they need to know Him themselves. Amen. He said, I remember, I'm not bragging on me, I'm just bragging on who I live for. Amen. He said, I remember all the time you'd witness to me, and I'd see the tears roll out of your eyes as you witness and tell me about Jesus. He said, I knew you was sincere, but I wasn't ready to accept him. But see, God knows the right time. You know, we try to do things in ourselves sometimes. We want to push stuff on people, force people. Without the Spirit of God, if it ain't in control, if it ain't going ahead of you and working, praise God, then you'll not see anything accomplished. Amen. Amen. I've seen people go to people in church and climb up the pew and try to get them to go to the altar. They ain't doing a thing but pushing them away, away and falling away from God. Unless the Spirit of God draws, it ain't going to benefit nothing. Amen. If you think about it, God, the Bible says in verse number 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. God should see receive glory. If you sing, then God ought to get the glory. Thank God when the singers begin to get more important in God, then there's something wrong. Yeah. When they begin to get lifted up more than God, then there's something wrong. 
Thank you. There ain't nothing like good gospel singing under the anointing of God. I've seen people that could sing, could sing good, but they weren't anointed of God. You take some old man who won't we in the sing one time, pray to God, and these fancy people went up there with all their equipment. I pray to God, and they had about $15,000 worth of equipment they drug in the church. I pray to God, and they sang, and there wasn't nothing moved. Yeah. Then this old man and woman got up there with a little old guitar, I pray to God, and a little bit of apple pie, and began to sing, and the Spirit of God fell in that place. Yeah. You can buy all the musical instruments you want, but if it ain't for God, you might as well leave them at the house. Yeah, nice. Praise God. When we begin to lift up man more than God, ain't nothing wrong with pinning the rose on somebody. Ain't nothing wrong with going up and telling somebody they sang good because any time the Norton's on them, the singing will be good. Amen. That's right. Bless when I was raised in church, I'm not knocking any church. Don't get me wrong. I'm not critical of anybody. But though we never had a PA set, didn't even know what a microphone was. Uh, praise God. Uh, the old preacher Garber, he's dead now. He lived about 90-some years and preached about 70. Praise God. Uh, well, let me tell you, that old man, I was raised under his preaching. Uh, that's where I got saved in that church uh, when I was 12 years old. Uh, well, let me tell you something. Uh, Praise God, when he was under the power and anointing of God, uh, them preachers walked by aisles. Uh, Praise God, they went uh, to and fro. Uh, couldn't be still. Uh, it was like they had a microphone attached to them, but they didn't have one. We didn't have one. Ain't nothing wrong with microphones. I love to use them. Uh, amen. It brings out the sound, and it makes it clearer. Well, you can hear, that's what we need to do. You know, the Bible says, if you play, play skillfully. Uh, that's what it says. It says that. Uh, you know, but we should do our best for God. Whatever we to do, it ought to be our best. That's the reason I don't play the guitar, which I used to chord one I own one. But I don't play it skillfully. Uh, and I don't put the time into it that needs to be put into it, so I'll leave it in its case. Uh, but if you go do it for God, it ought to be done to the best of your ability. He, he said, glory to God. Uh, he said, the minister with the ability that God gives. Uh, Amen. If God don't give you the ability, you can't do it. There may be a lot of people out there who wants to be preachers, but if you ain't God called and God sent, you ain't going to preach. Amen. But today, we love you out there. And if you are one of God's children, you should be the salt of the earth, and you should be the light. Amen. Let me read something to you right here. In Matthew 6, 22 and 23, it said, The light of the body is the eyes. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Think about it now. What, what the body's receiving is what's coming through the eyes. What you and I are looking at. You know, if we look at porn and all these different things, and we say that we belong to God, then we're corrupting this vessel of God because of what we're receiving through the eyes. But what you and I should do is look at his holy things and get our minds upon God. We should have our visions fixed. Listen to what he says. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If our eyes is evil, what we look at is evil. Then it fills our bodies full of darkness. He said, if therefore the light that is in thee be dark, how great is the darkness. How great is it if we're full of darkness. He says in Philippians seven, uh, 3, 7, and 8, For what things we gain to me, for what things were gained to me, though I count them lost for Christ. All that you and I possess before we become Christian, we count them all lost. All that the world had to offer you and I, we count it all as lost, don't we? He, sa he said in uh, verse Number eight, yea, doubtless I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ, Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. All his possessions, all the things that they thought they were enjoying, Paul said he counted them all as dung. As horse manure, you might say, he counted all things as dung. All his 
former life was counted as dung, that he may win Christ. He, in other words, he said, I'm willing to give up everything in my life that I may have Christ in my life. But you know, that's what's wrong with a lot of people this day and time. They're not willing to turn loose to the things of this world. Sister, so get on the get on the piano there, whatever the Lord laid on your heart. Susan, Susan uh, and Jordan are listening and said to pray for them. But you sing us something there. But today I wonder right now if you're out there and you're professing to be uh, one of the children of God, are you the salt? Are you the salt? We've got three minutes left. Man just told me. I'm going to give you the opportunity right now. If you're not living the way you should or where you should, uh, won't you come to Jesus right now? If you're the salt of the earth, then begin to act like you're the salt of the earth, that you're good uh, for season in the day. Or you're the light of the world. Uh, praise God, where's your light? Uh, you don't put a light under a bushel or a basket, uh, but you set it on the candlestick. The Word of God says it may give off light uh, until the whole house is your candle shining tonight. Uh, or have you got it covered up with a basket tonight? Hey, man, we're going to ask you right now. Wherever you at, we had some that said they was going to be listening today. Uh, said they couldn't get their life right and get in church. Well, right now is your opportunity, uh, hey man, to get your life right with God. Have you been covered by the blood? Maybe a good chance that's the reason you don't have a light to shine. Maybe you're not the salt. Maybe you've never had the blood applied. Are you covered today by the blood? Thank God I'm covered by the blood this day. Sing it, sisters. Amen. Yeah, on the cross, all the sins of the lost, a perfect man dying for you and me. It's been good to be here with you today. Until the next week at this same hour in the Shout of the Cross Radio Ministry. Uh, amen. We'll be praying for you. You pray for us. Uh, amen. 